anxious to get on with it, faces the bowling of Mike Proctor. The commentator is Jim Laker. Moving in again. Yet another bounce of the Clive Lord, and how magnificently he put that away through mid-wicket, controlled, hook shot, all the way along the ground. Proctor to him again. And just look at that. One couldn't wish to see a better or more perfectly placed straight drive. Four more runs and the delight on the lengths of the court is there. The runs now come into a fair pace. Lloyd instrumental in putting Lancashire up and cut the head with the clock at this stage. Barry Wood is partner, he still made 50 at the other end. And the sheet anchor roll and doing it so very, very well. Another bouncer, and the crowd love it when Lloyd hits it like that. It's not going to be four, Shepherd's cutting it off down at deep mid-wicket. But it brings Clive Lloyd two more runs. And he comes once again to Clive Lloyd. Barry Wood attempting a single for the wicketkeeper, but I dare he's not going to make it, no. And a fine return there and Barry Wood run out so a blow also to Lancashire also to Barry Wood been run out trying to take a single through to the keeper which meant that the third Lancashire wicket had fallen for 136 so now we've got a situation with Mortimer bowling to and a magnificent shot six runs to John Sullivan perfectly timed almost takes one's breath away with the effortless ease in which he put that over the mid-wicket boundary. This stage, Lancashire moved on to 155 for three. With Sullivan still there and beginning to look dangerous. Now we see at the other end, John Davey, the medium pace left, left arm bowler, coming into John Sullivan. Sullivan giving himself room but hitting all around it. And another wicket falling. That of Sullivan, the score at this stage became 156 for four. Mention surely of John Davey, who bowled seven overs at that stage, and off those seven overs, he'd only conceded 11 runs, and he'd taken that wicket. So one for 11, Clive Lloyd had moved beautifully and elegantly on, and now to 34. The total had moved to 160. There he is, going for the big hit, being beaten a little bit by the flight of that ball, Mortimer holding it back, defeating Lloyd's intention to put it over long arm, and we saw Clive Lloyd clean bowled by John Mortimer. He'd made 34, the Lancashire total was now 160 for five, and it's Farouk Engineer we see now out there. He'd just made a couple of runs at this stage. Mortimer now nearing the end of his spell, coming into Engineer. Team slip. Back foot going back, treads on his wicket. Umpire being asked, and Farouk Engineer is out. His heel slipped back and just removed that leg bail. So that was a six Lancashire wicket before. The total was 163, and it was Farouk Engineer who was out. Hit wicket to John Mortimore for just two. Mortimore now to Bond. So a magnificent stop. If he could only have got it back a little earlier, I think Jack Bond would have been run out. Superb stop there by Skipper Brown. So 42 left now, the difference between Lancashire and a place in the final. And Tony Brown really must have to think shortly about bringing Proctor into the attack. It looks as though Proctor is going to come and join the attack. He's still got four overs left to bowl. So Proctor to Simmons. Immediately the umpire coming on, he's just bowled one ball and umpire Bird coming over to see Arthur Jepson and I can't think they'll stay out there. Really at 25 past 8 at the end of July, it's amazing that we've been able to carry on so long. Fort Jack Bond obviously doesn't want to disappoint this enormous crowd, he'd like them all to stay and see the finish. He'd like to see a Lancashire victory in this semi-final game, see them through to Lords if they consult much more it's going to be very dark by the time somebody makes a decision 
So they're taking back their rightful positions. The game is going to resume. Well, that took about three minutes, that consultation. The light worsening the whole time. Proctor tearing in. Thick edge down Castro. No chance of cutting it off. Four lucky runs there to Simmons. So tremendous scenes here. Proctor in again. That's the bouncer. A brave hook shot by Simmons in the gathering gloom. Brings him a single. But he couldn't have seen too much of it. Skipper Bond to receive now from Proctor. That's a great shot, bringing up the 200. Bond taking a single to third man. So more enthusiastic applause. Some of their hands must be pretty sore, all the clapping they've got through today. Three hours, 36 minutes, the 200 has taken. 22nd wanted off seven overs, John Mortimore to come in for his 10th over. He's building. So they're continuing, but that was a brave, noble effort by Jack Simmons. 25, looking to get him a victory as quickly as possible tonight. Aiming for the big hit of John Mortimore. A great all-round performance by Jack Simmons. The point is, of course, that his eyes have got accustomed to this light. Whether the same is going to apply to David Hughes, who's coming out of a pavilion, in fact, a dressing room where the lights are on inside. that away on the offside to get off the mark optimistically looking for a second but no chance so it's Jack Bond on 15 the Lancashire total on 204 26 wanted we're in the 54th over a little bit worried about the light it's certainly got progressively darker despite the fact that Proctor is coming off it's going to be John Davy two overs left he's about 10 overs one for 21 these two batsmen wishing the light was something as it's appearing on your television screen it is of course there's no relation to the actual light here now it's really extremely dark I can never remember a first-class match being played at this time and in such bad light so if you scramble in another single another single nearer this total of 230 lights on there shining brightly in the Lancashire dressing room just above the clock quarter to nine it's showing yeah. railway station there all illuminated now in the middle of Jack Bond's bat so only a single Davy really a fine performance this by Jack Davy one for 22 off 11 overs further conference between these two so it's now 25 wanted to win off five overs the run rate moving up a little bit five and over and still nobody leaving 
Nothing on the way, get up. No idea what yes, I have. Yes, gone through extra cover for four. So, four good runs to David Hughes, using his feet, getting down the wicket to John Mortimer. Twenty-one runs to win. Three wickets left. And Fifty-six balls. So some field placings, bringing an extra man over on the offside for David Hughes. because the light must get worse the longer they hold it play. So that brings the difference down to 15. David Hughes desperately signaling these boys to get out of the way. He wants to get on with it. Mortimer again. Challenge accepted. Fine off drive. This won't find the boundary. Bissex is there. They're coming back for the second. going to be safe this time yes he's found the gap bring him two more runs so tremendous over this for Lancashire just 11 wanted to win tremendous scenes here at Old Trafford Lancashire still out there 11 wanted to win there's certainly four more of them there, a magnificent colour drive by Hughes. Ten minutes to nine in gathering gloom. And Lancashire pressing on. Now just seven runs away from a momentous victory. And a lot of the credit in this over to David Hughes. He's already struck on this over. 4-6-2-2-4. Four, and that lost a total of 229 now almost within reach seven runs one dip of victory still four more overs john mortimer in he's going down again and that's six a magnificent shot a superb effort this by david hughes that's bringing the scores level the crowd scenes, 22,000 people here have stayed to the bitter end, stayed through the dark, had tremendous value. All over the field, the scores are level, 24 came off that over. And David Hughes, a hero of the hour at Old Trafford. Cricket, I shall remember for a very long time. Never have I seen a game, a first-class game go on such a length as this. From 11 o'clock this morning, and now after 10 minutes to nine, Proctor being tossed the ball, but what chances he got now? Three wickets still to fall. The score's level. So nothing now for Gloucester to do but all gather in and try and prevent the single. And Proctor's only chance is a hat-trick. He's not going back off his first run. In he comes. On to face, a bouncer. And listen to the hoots from this crowd. 
Doctor has been the villain of the piece here over the last hour and a half or so. He's let loose a number of bouncers, and it is very dark now. Lancashire all on their toes. One run wanted for victory to take them once again into the final at Lords in September. Jack Bond, the skipper now, encircled by the whole Gloucester side. six runs these two have come on the lights in the railway station lights in the dressing room there's lights everywhere except on the field but it certainly hasn't worried David Hughes or Jackie Bond still not the single all the crowd boys on the end of the ropes waiting to converge on this field all on their marks on the toes waiting to come the stands still heavily populated gates were closed early this morning the crowd have remained all the way through the day's play now we're getting the football crowd the chanting the singing and props are again to bond tried to swing it away wanted to go for a leg bar but sent back Two balls left in this Proctor over. This latter spell he's been taking something like six minutes to get through and over. But we're getting the Lancashire now from all the supporters around the crowd. They've really gone for this Gillette Cup cricket in a big way. single to win was 